We do our best work while in competition. It's why the space race took us to the moon, and it's why drivers usually set their fastest lap times during races. The fact is, when the spirit of competition pushes us, we demand the absolute most from ourselves. That's why, in terms of engine development and performance, one competition, named the Schneider Trophy Race, resulted in one of the biggest leaps forward in internal combustion engine performance the world had ever seen. The Schneider Trophy was an international aviation competition held between 1913 and 1931. It was initially sponsored by Jacques Schneider, a wealthy French industrialist, and organized by the Fédération Aeronautique Internationale. To put it briefly, the competition was aimed at promoting and advancing aviation technology, with a focus on seaplanes and floatplanes. Similar to how F1 teams construct and race cars today, the Schneider Trophy followed the same concept, engineer and construct the fastest seaplane possible. The triangular course covered about 50 kilometers, with contestants flying the circuit seven times. The course was marked out with by buoys and was flown at low altitude over the open ocean, with planes taking off and landing on the water. The competition was highly competitive, with countries such as Italy, the United States, Great Britain, and France all fielding teams. It was also highly dangerous, with several pilots losing their lives in pursuit of victory. In 1927, England won the event with the Napier Lion-powered Supermarine S5, which was designed by the legendary R.J. Mitchell, who would later design the Spitfire. However, the Lion was an engine of World War I vintage, and the British Air Ministry felt it was no longer a competitive platform. As such, the ministry began leaning on Rolls-Royce to produce a modern engine ready for the 1929 race. Henry Royce, however, was reluctant to participate, as they didn't want to risk the embarrassment of a public failure. Eventually, however, Royce conceded, but instead of developing a new engine from the ground up, they chose to modify an existing engine, the Buzzard. The result was the high-performance Sprint-type R engine. This buzzard, originally designed for large flying boats, had twice the displacement of the Kestrel at 36.7 liters, giving Rolls-Royce more than enough displacement to usher in a new paradigm of engine performance. While the buzzard and the R engine shared their stroke, bore capacity, and 60-degree V12 layout, the R engine was designed to be more compact than its predecessor. One of the key features of the R engine was its single-stage, double-sided supercharger impeller. The engine also featured ram air for its supercharger intake, a deceptively simple idea patented by Rolls-Royce in 1927. In the Schneider Trophy S6, ram air induction contributed as much as 10% additional horsepower, and all frontline aircraft engines used in World War II would subsequently use some form of ram air induction to great effect. These two developments meant Rolls-Royce could supply intake air at up to 18 psi to the R, a figure which would later become known as boost. This, coupled with its ability to run at high RPM due to structural strength and unique fuel blends, was the key to the R engine's high power-to-weight ratio. Essentially, while the former philosophy for chasing power was simply continuing to increase the engine's size, Rolls-Royce became one of the first to begin increasing the engine's strength and focusing on gaining power through withstanding higher levels of forced induction. So, with that in mind, the engine's length was minimized by not staggering the cylinder banks fore and aft, which meant the connecting rods from opposing cylinder banks had to share a short crankshaft bearing journal, known as a big end. This required the use of an articulating type rod, rather than a typical fork and blade. Another one of the key challenges they faced was keeping the supercharger diameter to a minimum and increasing the mass airflow through the supercharger. The supercharger's housing size dictated the diameter of the S6's fuselage, so minimizing the cross-sectional area was crucial, hence the eventual double-sided design. The R engine also featured wet liner cylinder blocks, a crankcase, and a prop reduction gear casting produced from RR50 aluminum alloy, which was chosen due to the engine's short life expectancy. Because it was a sprint engine, aluminum was used instead of bronze and steel for most applications. The propeller reduction gear housing was also reshaped, and the camshaft and rocker covers were modified to fit into the shape of the S6's nose. Also, the air intake was positioned in the engine's V, minimizing its length. Later production R engines featured sodium-filled exhaust valve stems for improved cooling. At the same time, additional modifications, including a redesigned lower crankcase casting and the introduction of an oil scraper ring below the piston gudgeon pin, which was a measure later carried over to the Merlin. The ignition system was pretty typical, consisting of two rear-mounted crankcase-driven magnetos. Cooling was performed in the S6 with a skin cooling system and intentionally running a rich mixture. Perhaps the most unique feature of the R engine was its fuel blend. Special fuel was developed by Rod Banks, who used a mixture of 11% petrol, 89% benzol, plus 5 cc's of tetraethyl lead per gallon for early ground test runs. 
This fuel blend was used to win the 1929 Schneider Trophy race and continued to be used until June of 1931. At that point, they added 10% methanol to the mixture, resulting in 20 horsepower increase in reducing the fuel weight, while acetone was added to prevent intermittent misfiring for the 31 airspeed record attempt. Ground testing of the R involved three Kestrel engines, one to drive the double-sided supercharger and two to power the water and oil pumps. Once the engine had been successfully tested on the ground, flight testing began, which went smoothly. Before long, the S6 and the R were mated into the mind-meltingly fast plane they would eventually become. The first actual run of the R took place at Rolls-Royce's Derby factory on the 7th of April, 1929. Mechanical fares were experienced during bench testing, including burnt valves, connecting rod breakages, and main bearing seizures, while considerably more trouble than expected occurred with the valve springs. Continual redesigning and testing of these components reduced all of these problems. During these first tests, the engine only produced about 1,400 horsepower. However, that figure was soon elevated to 1,900 horsepower at 2,900 RPM at 55 inches of mercury. Ultimately, throughout the engine's developmental life, the engine would output 2,530 horsepower, with options to boost that figure to 2,783. However, the engine was never used at 27 horsepower in the Supermarine S6, as the torque became too much for the pilot and the aircraft to compensate. On September 13, 1929, the Supermarine S6, powered by the R engine, won its first Schneider Trophy race. The race was held at Calshot Spit near Southampton, England. During the event, the S6 covered the course at an unprecedented speed of 528 kilometers an hour, or 328 miles per hour. Two years later, the final trophy race in 1931 was again won by the British with an updated R engine. At this time, Rolls-Royce was under the gun to modify the R in a way that would allow them to maintain the required 2300 horsepower for one hour. While this seemed like a tall order at first, it proved to be an easy challenge for the designers, as Rolls-Royce was now in its element an extremely aggressive development schedule that required novel engineering solutions. However, despite their ultimate success, the road to more power did have its challenges. Particularly, trouble with failed connecting rods and crankshafts plagued the engine with its new elevated output. Correcting the connecting rod problem required abandoning the preferred roller bearing design for the more straightforward plane bearing design, and also increasing the loading surface available from using a master rod and articulating rod on each crankshaft throw. Other issues included the incredibly high oil consumption, which at one point amounted to a rate of 112 gallons per hour. This led to an improved piston ring design, which was determined to be the culprit. Exhaust valves were also discovered not to be able to hold up to the new power requirements, and sodium-cooled valves were developed by a man named Sam Heron. Interestingly, at this exact point in engine development history, we can see the moment the sleeve valve idea, previously touted by individuals such as Henry Ricardo, was made, if not obsolete, pretty close. The knock temperature ceiling was lifted with sodium-cooled valves, allowing a poppet valve engine to reach ludicrous power outputs. Finally, even with the R engine's total power output limited due to the structural limits of the aircraft, it was becoming exceedingly difficult for pilots to handle due to the torque effect. Solutions to this problem included increasing the size of the left float relative to the right and filling the right float with more fuel than the left. The 1931 race was anticlimactic due to the absence of the much-respected Italian team. As it turned out, the Italians had a far more competitive aircraft than the S6B, the Machi Castoldi MC-72, an aircraft similar to the S6B and powered by a Fiat AS6, which was essentially two AS5 V12s. However, Rolls-Royce's wind tunnel testing had set them apart from the Italians, who were contending with the issue of fuel mixture becoming leaner when high-speed air passed through the carburetor. While Rolls-Royce had solved this issue, the Italians had yet to isolate the cause of their engines misfiring at high speed, causing them to drop from the race. Despite there not being much of a race at all in the 31 exhibition, perhaps more interestingly, the S6B would set several airspeed records, traveling at a blistering 655 km an hour or 407 miles per hour, while piloted by Flight Lieutenant John N. Boothman. During this record attempt, the engine was boosted with 20 psi, achieving a final manifold pressure of 70 inches of mercury. The fuel, which was a custom mixture made specifically for the record attempt, was comprised of 60% methanol, 30% benzol, and 10% acetone and lead. At this power level, which hovered between 2500 and 2700 horsepower, the R was stressed to its absolute limit, with engineers later discovering the engine was stretching the cylinder hold-down bolts. The fact was, with the R engine, Rolls-Royce had something special on their hands. An engine that, for a brief time in history, represented the pinnacle of engine output per unit of displacement and weight. 
So potent the R engine proved to be that it would eventually become the only engine in history to power vehicles that simultaneously held the air, land, and water speed records. The first non-flying vehicle to receive an R engine was the Bluebird, a land speed record attempt car built by Malcolm Campbell. The car's gearing was such that 100 miles an hour was equal to about 1,000 RPM, making the car theoretically capable of 340 miles per hour. However, this never occurred due to the issues that would never be fully resolved. Particularly with the monstrous power of the R engine, the car unsurprisingly had issues with traction. While the car was initially run at Daytona Beach, the hard-packed sand created massive wheel spin. Soon, however, Campbell would hear about the impossibly smooth salt flats in Bonneville, Utah, and in 1935, Bluebird would become the first car to exceed 300 miles an hour and the first to use the salt flats for a land speed record attempt. Another land speed record holder, George Easton's Thunderbolt, was more sophisticated than Bluebird. This car featured three axles, eight wheels, four-wheel drive, and was powered by two R engines. However, even with the addition of four-wheel drive, the awesome power of the R engines proved too much for the tires, and the car was also plagued with traction issues. Even so, the car would take the record from Bluebird, achieving an incredible speed of 357 miles per hour in 1938. Sadly, while the car could have likely set an even faster record, it was destroyed in a fire in New Zealand during World War II. In terms of water speed records, Campbell also developed a Bluebird boat, powered by a single R engine. After several attempts, the boat reached 142 miles an hour in 1939, just before the outbreak of the war. Unsurprisingly, the development of the R engine was the bedrock upon which the eventual Merlin engine sat. The philosophical idea of reiterating existing designs rather than launching exotic avant-garde projects would serve Rolls-Royce well during the upcoming conflict particularly in the case of the Merlin, which was based on the R engine's design, but incorporated improvements such as a new cylinder head design, improved supercharger impeller, and increased displacement. Also, the lessons learned from the R engine's development were not inconsequential. The importance of fuel requirements, metallurgy, and the iterative process of optimizing engine performance was made clear to Rolls-Royce during the R's development. These lessons, while perhaps uninteresting to the layman, would soon mean the difference between life and death for thousands, as Rolls-Royce raced to produce an engine capable of defending the sovereignty of the whole of Britain.